Food addiction is real, and it might be caused, at least in part, by a virus. And no, this is not some conspiracy theory about the big food Illuminati engineering a bioweapon to get you to buy their tasty treats. Although, as I say that, I hope I'm not giving them any ideas. Oops. But seriously, this video is going to speak about brand new data actually published yesterday as I record this in the journal Nature Metabolism that suggests a virus can contribute to food addiction. We are going to break down what the data say and what they don't, and why this might actually be a hopeful finding. Before I get to the rest of this video, I just want to flag that this is a special video. Because at the end, I'm going to include an exclusive clip from the research team themselves, made specifically for my audience, for you. This is part of my initiative to help amplify the researcher's voice and bring you as close to the science as possible. So stick around until the end. Now, let's get back to it. But first, let me clarify that food addiction is indeed real and can be defined based on criteria for a substance use disorder from the DSM-5, Diagnostic Manual for Mental Health Disorders. This includes taking a substance in larger amounts than was intended, inability to control substance use, taking a substance for longer than was intended, and continued use despite adverse consequences. Specifically, the Yale Food Addiction Scale and Yale Food Addiction Scale 2.0 has gained widespread acceptance as a clinical tool for assessing this condition, food addiction. Now, here's another fact. The brain talks to the gut, and the gut talks to the brain. More to the point, the microbiome, the community of organisms, bacteria and otherwise, living in our intestines, well, they can influence our brains and therefore influence our minds and mental health. That's not controversial. It's a biological fact, although one that lacks a bit of specificity. So now here's another question. What shapes the microbiome to shape the brain and shape the mind? Well, there are many things, but one that is understudied is viruses. Specifically, bacteriophages, viruses that attack bacteria, have the capacity to shape the microbiome and by extension, shape human metabolism and the brain and human mind. So, running with this logic, the researchers behind this study first looked to see if there was an association between any viruses in higher Yale food addiction scales scores in humans, and indeed, they found one family of viruses stood out, the microviridae. The presence of microviridae family viruses was positively associated with food addiction scores, in not just one population, but also in a validation human cohort. In other words, to confirm their findings, the researchers checked multiple independent human populations and found the same association, more microviridae viruses associated with worse food addiction scores. And to add to the story, they looked beyond that, looking at BMI and even waist circumference, a better marker of abdominal fat than BMI, and found also an association between the microviridae and abdominal fat or waist circumference. Then, to dig a little deeper, they looked at what specific species of microviridae family viruses was most abundant and found it was a virus called Goku Show Virus WZ2015A. Say that five times fast. And no, I don't think there's any association to Dragon Ball Z. Then, if that weren't enough, they did functional magnetic resonance imaging, brain scans of the human brain in another cohort to look at how this Goku Show virus, WZ2015A, no, I'm not really gonna say it five times fast, associated with changes in brain activity and found higher levels of the Goku Show virus associated with changes in the dopamine networks in the human brain. In fact, they found changes that align with research on the brain dopamine effects of drugs like morphine and cocaine. So now we have a specific species of virus associating with higher clinical food addiction scores and brain activity states, dopamine states, 
on fMRI imaging in humans. But they went a level further to demonstrate a causal relationship. The researchers then transplanted human samples with and without the Goku Show virus to mice and found that the human to mouse Goku Show virus transfer, the transplant, indeed caused food addiction like behavior in the mice. In this case, in response to chocolate flavored pellets. So they were causing chocolate addiction in mice with a human Goku Show virus from human poop. That's what they did. Now, that's pretty cool. We have a specific species of virus that can be transmitted between organisms and in so doing transmit features of food addiction. How crazy is that? But again, we have to ask how. Now, I'm going to spare you a lot of technical details and scientific jargon, basically a jargon tsunami, and just say they found that the Goku Show virus messes with the metabolism of precursors to dopamine and serotonin, which are the amino acids tyrosine and tryptophan, respectively. But more to the point, an intermediate of tryptophan metabolism named anthranilic acid that is lower in humans with more of this food addiction Goku Show virus actually showed a protective effect against food addiction when supplemented to food addicted mice. How exactly it does that is not yet clear, nor whether this relatively simple molecule could protect human patients against the food addiction virus. This research is so new. Literally, this was published yesterday as I'm doing this. But given what we now know about higher microviridae Goku Show virus levels in humans associating with more and worse food addiction and obesity and higher waist circumference and dopamine brain changes in humans, well, the spotlight of metabolic knowledge is shining really brightly on this hot topic, and the black box of mental health is looking just a bit more illuminated. Isn't that exciting? I'm so excited and so curious that I might even go get a tattoo of Stay Curious on my bicep. Actually, that's what I'm doing this afternoon. Anyway, I'm super pumped. Let me know what you thought about this video. And as always, stay curious. I'm excited for the next one. I am just so enthusiastic to be here teaching and learning with you. There is just so much to learn. In moments like this, when I get to read this kind of paper, just you know, write about it, talk about it to a camera, and then feed your enthusiasm back to me, and then back to you, and then back to me, it's just the best. So thank you, and have a great day. Now, as promised, here's a clip from one of the authors specifically made for you. I asked him, why are these data important? And what's the next step in this research? Here's what he had to say. Hi, Nick. So thanks for getting in touch about our research. And here is what we plan to do uh, next and why we're excited about uh, these findings that, uh, that we found. So first off, uh, the gut is not just about digestion. So uh, every time it's more clear that the, there is a connection between the gut uh, and the brain, and the gut can influence the way we think, we believe, or, or we behave. Uh, however, most of the studies uh, so far, I would probably say more than 90% of the studies, just focus on bacteria. But we know that the gut microbiota is much more than that. Uh, you know that uh, in, the, in the gut microbiota we have viruses, uh, we have uh, fungi, or even we have uh, protozoa. And actually, viruses are the most abundant entities on, on the planet. And despite this, they have been largely overlooked uh, when it comes to, to human health. In addition, most of the of these studies focusing on the gut-brain axis are just associative. So we don't really know uh, whether the gut microbiota is the responsible or is the result of a particular a particular disease. And plus, most of the studies uh, just focus on what kind of microbes we have in the gut, so their their composition, but completely neglect or or overlook uh, what are they doing, what are they actually they they doing? That is they, they their function. And this is a really big, big deal because maybe you and, and I, we have different, completely different micro, my, my microbes, but maybe they perform the same function. So maybe this difference, that, that doesn't matter. So uh, we tried to address all these, all these issues, and we actually found that these microbiota bacteriophages are responsible for food addiction by altering the metabolism of both the, of the main neurotransmitter, that are serotonin and dopamine, as, as you have really, uh, really, really, really well explained. Um, and here is the other, uh, the other really interesting uh, 
finding the and, and it's that that the um, viruses have high individual specificity. So it means that they are unique to each to each person, but they are really stable over time. They can last for for several years. And actually, microviridae are the most uh, stable in the, in the human gut. This is really important uh, considering this specificity and, and stability, because it opens the window for for new treatments uh, to personalize the the treatment uh, against and in this case to tackle to tackle food addiction. Uh, all that said, uh, there's still a lot that we, that we don't know. So, uh, for example, we have seen that these uh, microbial bacteriophages influence uh, the metabolism of serotonin and, and dopamine, but we don't know exactly how. Uh, for example, is the, are these viruses uh, directly responsible, or are they uh, influencing the gut bi bi bacteria that in turn then modify um, the level or the metabolism of these neurotransmitters? These are uh, big, big questions that we are trying to, to address. Uh, and finally, I would la just like to make a, a clarification uh, because we are talking about bacteriophages. So these are, this means that these are virus, virus, viruses that uh, infect bacteria, but not human cells. This is important to avoid any kind of misunderstanding because I've seen in several posts that they talk about um, uh, viruses that are attacking us or, or are infecting us, but this is not the, the case. They are just infecting bacteria. So don't worry uh, if you see this kind of thing. And lastly, thanks again for, for reaching out and your interest in our research because it's really awesome to see that there is people that is interested in, the, in this connection between the brain and the gut and particularly in the, in the role of viruses.